Now, with the definition of the Green Lagrange strain tensor, uh, it's now clear that for a nonlinear analysis, we have a new uh, definition of the strain. That means we are not using the basic engineering strains that we were using before. Now, same is the case with stresses. There are, of course, multiple uh, stress measures that can be used for geometric nonlinear problem. But let's just review basically the stress term called the Cauchy stress or what you might also know commonly as true stress. The true stress is actually the stress that's acting in the current configuration in the system. It is measured, of course, per unit uh, area of the material in the system. And it's, it's the stress that you have been using throughout for the linear analysis as well. So if you just say that the uh, Cauchy stress or the true stress in the three-dimensional form, you may know it as exactly this. Here, this sigma denotes the Cauchy stress tensor, which is written in the Cartesian components at a certain current condition. Now, of course, Cauchy stress reflects what is actually happening in the material at the time, and therefore, the true stress term prevails. So for an engineering calculation, this is a very relevant stress, but it does not work with the finite strain measures such as the Green Lagrange strain that is commonly used in the finite element analysis for nonlinearities. So, we need to find a conjugate stress uh, measure for the Green Lagrange strain that we have already defined before. This happens to be the second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor. There should be a double H here. This stress tensor is, of course, symmetric. And it's often uh, referred to as either the second PK or the PK2 stress tensor. In terms of Cartesian coordinates, it is written in the exact same way as the sigma, but instead with S. So you can write it as XX, XY, XZ. The Piola Kirchhoff, uh, the second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor and the Cauchy stress tensor are connected to each other through certain transformations, which are also related to the deformation gradient. So without going into a lot of details, I can already describe that S, which is the second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor, can be given as a term J, F inverse, which is of course the deformation gradient times the Cauchy stress, F inverse transpose, or the other way around, if you have your Cauchy stresses, then you can also get J inverse, F, S, F transpose. J here is given as the determinant of the deformation gradient, F. Uh, we are not going into the details of the, def uh, of the description, but there are some things that are very important uh, to understand uh, in terms of the differences between the use of the second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor and the Cauchy stress tensor. If you go through the definition, uh, it's, uh, you would be able to understand that the second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor actually does not have a lot of physical meaning. It is only used because it is a conjugate stress measure for the Green-Lagrange strain. But to make any uh, necessary calculations, for example, safety factors, strength factors, then we need to recover the Cauchy stresses for any of these tasks. And of course, in that case, we already have the definition here of how we can uh, recover the Cauchy stresses to make all the calculations. So the second Piola Kirchhoff stress is just a theoretical stress which is used for solving uh, the finite element nonlinear problem. But otherwise, the um, Cauchy stresses are always required to be um, recovered so that we can do some uh, better calculations. So all the stresses that you would see in your finite element analysis tool that you make your decisions upon are actually the Cauchy stresses which have been recovered after multiple iterations of the uh, program by means of the second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor. Uh, I hope these fundamentals are now clear to you because these are, the now, these are terms now that we will use and put together to form the equilibrium equation and further learn how to solve it by means of the strain energy and the principle of virtual work conditions.